Parkinson's law. And I'm not surprised, Chris, you've had the success you've had because it's wired into all of humanity. And so a quick lesson on this is Parkinson was a theorist in the 1950s who noticed that it's human nature that as a resource expands in its availability that we consume more of it. So the classic example is the more food that's put in front of us, the more we consume. Plates over the last two or 300 years alone have doubled in size, therefore portions have doubled in size and consumption as a society has doubled in size. Well, what he said is if we simply constrain resources, it's forced frugality, you have to work with those parameters, but something greater happens and it's innovation. So I suspect what's happened with you, Chris, what's happened with my business and the folks that I get case studies from is as they take their profit first, the concept is cash flows in, take a percentage first, hide it away from yourself. So now you have less cash available that you work within those parameters. And when you say you need something, but don't have the cash to do it, it forces innovative thought. How do I get that new technology or new equipment? Can I negotiate a deal? Uh, can I get used stuff? Uh, can I just delay the purchase for now? But we think much more frugally and more innovatively. The other key though is removing that temptation. If we don't hide away the profits from ourselves and it just sits there in front of us, it can become very tempting to borrow from it. By taking your profit first, you're reverse engineering profitability. And it used to be, say, a $1,000 deposit came in. I used to say, oh, I have $1,000. That's not the reality. It has multiple responsibilities. The first being a profit. And maybe I take 200 bucks for profit. Some is to pay myself a normalized salary, which is different than profit. Profit is a reward for owning a business and taking the risk you've taken to start 19 companies. Thank you. You're contributing to our economy. That's huge. You also get a salary for the work you do within some or all of those companies. Then, as you said, Uncle Sam will come and knock in. And uh, I hate to say it. There's not many ways around it. Yes, you want to work with an accountant who can reduce your tax consequences, but in part, we're an agent for the government. So when you sell something for $1,000, the government has a take they get, which could be upwards of you know 30% or something. That money is going to go to them. So we have to reserve for taxes. And then the last part is for the continuance of the business. We call it OPEX. Well, when you go through the system, a $1,000 deposit isn't $1,000 in your hand. It may be about $300 to operate your business. It's a little bit of a brutal wake-up call when you first do this, but then it's human nature. We quickly adjust, thanks to Parkinson's law, work off of those true operating expenses, expenditures, and the profit accumulates, our pay is consistent, and yes, we have money to pay Uncle Sam. I love it. Yeah, and you know we've even gotten creative with the names of our accounts. Like, oh, that's cool. One of our companies, we call it the war chest, and what that is is I oh, know I the markets that. are going to fall apart, and when they do, I want this reserve account that's just there to gobble up our competitors and just take yeah. market share. So we call that the war chest, and I've even taken the war chest. The war chest has gotten big, you know, high six figures, and I'm like, I don't want the bank hanging on to that money. I don't trust banks, and that's why I teach people how to create private banking systems. So what I started actually doing is siphoning money from the war chest. And then creating almost another account, you know, another segregated account. And some of that money goes to private loans. Some of that money goes into the specially designed whole life policies where that money then grows with compound interest. And we just deploy it after that. Then I got my reserve account because, hey, you know, when things do fall apart, my business could take a hit. I want to make sure my staff, my bills and everything get paid. And then taxes, of course. But I, the other thing I've done is I've taken what, and I think you taught this in the book, but I've I've taken these these separate accounts, the war chest, the reserve account, and I've spread them out between different types of institutions. You know, I use my tax account. I do it over at TD Ameritrade. I do, you know, some of the other accounts that we're saving up for, you know, different things that we're going to expand. And those are yeah. done inside the, the whole life policies. And so I've, I've actually just taken what you taught and I've said, hey, this would be cool if I could get uninterrupted compound interest on it. This would be cool if I had this money over here so that I can't take it even in, you know, hell and high water if I want it it's harder to get. So I've yeah. just played these games and, and uh, it, it's, it's pretty incredible. And, and you know, I want to just pause quick, Mike, because we're piping this book profit first up so much. Why don't we give some copies away? Your yeah. sponsor relay bank, which is, is appropriate because we're talking about banking and what we do here, but relay bank has agreed to give away 10 books to all of you listening to this. Mike, do you want to talk a little bit about what's going on with this? Yeah, yeah. So they're a banking platform, meaning it's all online. You can set up your accounts in seconds. And they've designed their system to work specifically and exclusively with Profit First. They're the first banking system to do this, and they've done it perfectly. So once this was developed, uh, I was like, I'm all in on this. By the way, it was two years in the process of developing this to make sure they adhered to the Profit First principles. 
So uh, I set a real simple link, bank like Mike. <laughs> and what will happen is uh, if you're looking for a new bank or an adjunct, a secondary bank, I think they're the one to check out. Go to banklikemike.com. And uh, as a little reward to incentivize people to check it out, uh, normally they give me, they would give me like an affiliate fee of some sort. Instead, I'm plowing it back into you. So $50 will go back into your account if you sign up through Bank Like Mike. So consider it an automatic, immediate first profit contribution gift from me or from Relay, however you want to see it. It'll go into your account. Um, and cool. and anyone that uh, goes to uh, sign up for this will also get into a raffle of, of 10 profit first books. So uh, hopefully you can enjoy the book too. Well, that's even better. I mean, I was reading my notes, but I knew we were giving 10 books away. I didn't know you were giving everybody 50 bucks. And 50, yeah, and everybody and anybody. Yeah, 50 bucks. And I don't know how long that's running. So I, I don't want to say it's like the next month or the next year. Uh, it's really not more than a year. So um, if you're interested, do it now. Forget about a year. Like, listen, if I want my daughter to clean her room, I don't say, hey, sweetie, clean up your playroom. I say, clean up your playroom right now, yeah. or I'm not going to give you your phone today. And, and, yeah. the, and the room just magically gets cleaned up. This is a three-year-old. So folks, everybody listening to this, you all know that I always talk about knowledge and how important it is. But knowledge is useless unless you take action on that knowledge. The time is now. 50 bucks is on the table. Like, just hit pause on this podcast right now. We'll wait for you. <laughs> we'll wait. Hit pause. And then go and sign up for 50 bucks. We're talking about creating segregated accounts and using the Profit First system. You now have a bank to do it at, and it's $50 in your bank account to do it. Like, what the heck would you wait for? on to do that like why would you wait like there's no yeah. reason to do it and oh. it is the and i'm not trying to brag on them too much but it is the best bank there's no fee checking all that stuff all the accounts are set up for you automatically and it's not an envelope system a lot of banks make these what's called sub accounts and that won't support profit first because you can overdraw on one account and pulls from another and that defeats the system this will keep you locked into your appropriate spend so that opex if it's 300 bucks you got 300 bucks to work with it forces the system which is really powerful and necessary for profit first. Yeah. And for any of you listening, and we're talking about these different terms, if you're confused, it's just because you haven't read the book. So, you know, get in the running to get one of the free 10 books. But I would even say, don't even wait for that. If you get the free book, give it to somebody because the act of giving is the most powerful thing you can do. So just buy the book. I did. I got the audio book. It's phenomenal. And if you want to read the paper book, then grab the paper book or get both. Some people listen while they read. That's true. That's what that. I do with my favorite books. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? All right. So let's let's pivot real quick, Mike. I want to go over to your new book, All yeah. In. Can you talk a little bit about the motivation behind this one and what it teaches? Yeah, I'm really lucky, Chris, that quite a few of my readers and I are in regular contact. And one regular question I have is, where are you stuck now? Or what's the challenge? And maybe this is probably because of the COVID pandemic and the new work environment. Maybe it's just the nature of a growing business. It's probably a combination thereof. A lot of people are struggling to find a team. And the most, a good team. And the most common question I hear is, I wish I could find an employee that acts like an owner. I wish my employees would act like owners. So I was like, okay, that's what I need to figure out. So this started, my research started actually pre-COVID because I was hearing that and I really doubled down in 2020. And I found some unique formulas. So I want to share a couple of things that you can act on right now. It's all included in the book. And All In is my newest book. It's not released yet. It's coming out on January 2nd, 2024, but you can pre-order it on Amazon. But what I found is most businesses, most companies try to do uh, traditional recruiting. We run an ad on Indeed, for example, and then we do some interviews. It's pretty exhausting. You rarely find a good candidate this way. Um, and even if you do find a candidate that you consider, the chance of them working out is 50-50. And everyone else that you interviewed, they don't get a job opportunity, so they don't know why they weren't qualified or not, and they keep looking. So my question was, how do you elevate everybody? How does everyone through the process come out better? And you get the best candidate in the world who acts like an owner. Well, I found organizations that already do this. And what it is, is in the sports arena. Specifically, college recruiting is famous for this. Now professionals do this too. I played uh, lacrosse in college, well, in high school and college. But in high school, I went to a camp at Hobart, uh, New York, which is northeastern or northwestern New York state. And I didn't realize this, but about 300 kids, students went there. And some of the athletes were getting tapped on the shoulder. I wasn't, but some were saying, hey, you're doing a great job here. We'd like to bring you to another field. And they started vetting out the elite players from the standard folks like me, I guess. And everyone in the process got better. Everyone got put into the group. 
but the the university was cherry picking students to play for them. It's a recruiting platform. So it's like, oh, if you run a camp where everyone gets educated, you can find the people who have the most thirst and desire to go to the next level and cherry pick them, but everyone's improving. So I'm like, there must be a business application. Well, sure enough, some corporations have been doing this without us knowing. Next time you go to Home Depot, watch what they do. Go for when they build the birdhouse. You know, bring your, your three-year-old daughter, build a birdhouse with us. They invite all the parents in. You'll see there'll be one or two employees there observing what's going on, one instructing, but others observing. The instructor is teaching you how to build the workhouse and uh, the birdhouse. They want to ingratiate you with the brand. They want you to buy stuff there. But the other employees are scouting for future Home Depot employees. They want to see the most participative parent, the one that's helping others, that knows what they're talking about and has um, some wherewithal around this type of activity. They'll then tap that person on the shoulder and say, hey, you're really showing some great skill here and some interest. You ever consider working part-time or full-time for Home Depot? We would be honored to have someone like you. They're cherry picking the best parents to become employees. We can run a workshop for our own business. It can be online, it can be in person, but say I need a bookkeeper. I could run a bookkeeping workshop and I could teach some basic book skill, bookkeeping skills if that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a higher end bookkeeper. I can run an advanced class where there's a prerequisite. You must already be a bookkeeper and we're gonna be teaching high end stuff. And the beautiful thing is I don't need to teach this. I don't do bookkeeping. I could simply hire or leverage a bookkeeper in my network and say, hey, would you teach this class for an hour? Maybe I pay them for it. But now I'm attracting people who are showing interest. They want to learn this next level. And I can observe their participation, tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, you're doing such a great job. We have an opportunity here at our company. Would you want to come on board? Everyone's elevated and you cherry pick the best. Wow.